Can you all see my screen? Yes. Awesome. So welcome and happy new year first, because this is the first session of Creative Morning in Guru Gram chapter. That's the name of the city where we run the chapter from. It's near to New Delhi, uh, uh, India. And uh, I haven't been to Gurgaon for the past one year and God knows when I will go back there. That's where our office is uh, as well. So the name of the session is The Joy of Exploration. And this is interesting and weird depending upon how you look at it. The two speakers, the two sessions that they're going to talk about, they're completely, completely different, right? Uh, you will get to see, uh, you will get to hear it uh, in a minute, but they're very different, but they're yet connected with one common thread and which is the whole idea of exploration. Uh, two speakers, first is Parul Bansal, who is right now online. Uh, she's a creative technologist, uh, and I have worked, we have worked together in the, in the past. And I don't know when it started, but she, she developed the love and the passion for the nature. And she presented this talk a little while ago. And everyone who was there in the presentation was fascinated with the idea and the whole exploration. It's not about being expert, but it's about being open to explore uh, new things. So Parul Bansal is our first speaker. Second is uh, Paul D'Souza. Paul D'Souza is an inventor. I, when I heard this word, uh, it was quite interesting for me because you generally tend to introduce yourself um, uh, either, you know, I'm a scientist, I'm a business person, I'm a creative person, but to, but to kind of correlate and but to identify yourself as an inventor was really very amazing and it was so honest. Again, we have worked together in the past and it's always a joy to hear uh, Paul's story. So Parul Bansal and Paul D'Souza are the two speakers for the January session. Before we get into the detail, here are the four people who are running the Creative Morning Guru Gram chapter. Without uh, this team support, I don't think we would have been able to organize this. On the left hand side, it's me, Alok, who is speaking. On the right hand side, it's Saikad Basak. He is in Calcutta right now, uh, eastern part of India. Samarth, uh, Samarth, I guess, is in the western part of India at the moment. And then we have the Parul, Parul speaker as well uh, this time. So before we get into, uh, before we look at the, or before we hear from the, <coughs> from the, speakers there is a small activity that i would like to do i know it's pretty late for few of you but it is important to kind of uh, open up kind of loosen up as well so i'm going to ask four or five questions to you and you can answer them uh, on the on the chat or you can speak them uh, as well whichever is more convenient uh, for you so here comes the first question what is the last book you read? You can type it in the chat window, or if you want, you can speak it up uh, on the camera as well. Writing would be helpful because then people would be able to carry it with them as well. I mean, I would get an inspiration to read that book. So what is the last book you read? That's nice. That's amazing. Watch making. Okay. Amazing. Oh, That's wonderful. Screenshot. Yeah, yeah, I will maybe I will share it in the notes. Uh, the second one, sorry, the second one is, if you could pick a certain skill instantly, what would it be? One skill that you could pick up instantly, what would it be? Oh, 
Okay. Maybe wants to learn coding. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I can say fly. Okay. Maybe with a jetpack, we can, we can try that. Make money sleeping. <laughs> Wonderful. Super fast speed reading. Yeah, I did try it with it a little while ago. Play instrument, talking, cooking, and photography. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, it's a wonderful list and kind of works as a reminder that this is something a lot of us want to do, but probably because of X Y Z reasons we are not able to do so. Maybe 2021 gives us the enough courage and the stamina to pick it up. Here goes uh, the next question. What is your absolute dream job? Read minds, interesting. Play piano, okay. Lego engineer, Andrea, wow. Paul D'Souza, inventing. Oh yeah, I can relate to it, Paul. <laughs> well, what are the things? The dream job. Architect. Alok Chandan, I, I know it's barrel, so it's photography. Help people have fun, that's amazing. College counselor, oh, that's amazing. This exercise have, I've always found very interesting because uh, this is something with, which I used to think as well. A job is not just about which pays you salary, but a job is something which you want to do. It's not about just do what you love, but it is also about what eventually or what I would like to do uh, in my in my life and maybe you know these kind of questions we know we have the answer it's a question of taking the courage so me not preaching about it but continuously reminding yourself that I would like to do this I would like to this works and Parul Bansal is a wonderful example she was fascinated about photography and nature she would talk about it all the time but eventually maybe it was the thousand repetitions which gave her the courage and the fuel to just go ahead and and do it it's wonderful uh and here goes the last question what is something that really amazes you what is something that amazes you in case you're not able to get my accent that's why i have written i think i did the right thing kids yeah i, I have two kids and they just woke up. Happy people. Yeah. Creativity. Human body. Wow. Amazing. This is amazing. So, so many different thoughts, so many different thought process. And we just don't realize it. So much of diversity, which is around us. And probably that is one of the reason I got excited about Creative Morning. Uh, it was Samarth who is part of the team who introduced me to Creative Morning. And that's probably the reason we got excited because at least we get ourselves exposed to all the different ideas and the thought process. Maybe I will... Uh, copy this and share it in the in the notes in the follow-up email so that you get to read uh, uh, whenever you have the time with this i would like now to hand over to paul paul over to you for for your talk you can click on uh, sharing your uh, you can click on the share button and then you can do the presentation the share screen button comes at the bottom at the status bar of the zoom window yeah so i i can speak like this for the moment and then if i have anything to share i'll switch to share absolutely okay. absolutely hi everyone it's a, a really a fun time to be here this morning from bangalore india and uh, i have i hope uh, i'll be able to light a little spark in every one of you and uh, being an inventor 
every day is exciting. So if I can pass on that excitement to all of you, that will be wonderful. Marilu, uh, as a musician, uh, I have something uh, uh, that might interest you, which is uh, my ignorance of music helped me uh, invent one of the most important things that I've ever done in my life. And that stemmed from my ignorance of music and trying to understand music. And uh, I can see Parul smiling and Parul worked with me for some time with part of Alok's team. And, uh, and I just want to also uh, take this time to acknowledge Subir who, who is online now. And uh, we got to know him a few weeks ago and we've been discussing stuff. And it's amazing just how close our paths have been and uh, right up to the things we are inventing together. Uh, without knowing each other's work right up to maybe two days ago. So that's, uh, that's something that uh, uh, I'll talk about. Anyway, I'll start uh, early on in my life. Uh, I, I started as a kid. I, I was brought up before the advent of uh, television and before television came to home. And uh, we didn't, phones were the old traditional phones. We didn't have mobile phones, no television. Uh, no other forms of entertainment, uh, movies were ra rarity. And so, and my fam uh, my dad and mom were not very affluent. So we were taught to, to, to do our own thing. We were taught to have hobbies and probably having a hobby and hobby is one of the most, uh, what should I say, uh, conducive things to creativity. It, it sort of opens up your mind and your abilities and channelizes them. So we were brought up with these hobbies and, and our, our friends were books in those days. And I spent most of my school days in the school library reading uh, encyclopedias, being inspired by inventors and inventions and you know things that people had done, things that are so significant that they actually made it into those encyclopedias. I must say that I was one of the few who used the encyclopedias in school because most of the other kids uh, used their library art to read comics and <laughs> other books that were not, I didn't think meant too much. And so uh, these encyclopedias were fantastic. And uh, that happened right through school. And I had some fantastic teachers who were a very profound, who left a very profound mark and influence on my life. And so, this, uh, I went through school and we, uh, right up to early college, we didn't have television. So we didn't have the distraction, uh, uh, what should I say, a significant amount of time wasted on uh, just being entertained for the sake of entertained, for the sake of entertainment rather. So I'm, I'm deviating from my, uh, my uh, talk that I was going to give you. And uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, I think, uh, because of, uh, of having spoken to you all, uh, and met a few of you just before the stock started and the way things are going, I think it, it, it will justify changing course a little bit. So when I left pre-university, I mean co college, uh, my father had just passed away. And so I got a job as a computer programmer uh, at a local pickle processing factory nearby. And uh, uh, I was doing the programming for them. And uh, that gave me access to the actual pickle processing plant where they would pickle, I mean, process uh, gherkins and pickle them. And they had these huge machines that would sort these, uh, the gherkins. And uh, I looked at the machines and I said, okay, this, they don't have to be this way. They don't need to be so big. And I asked the production manager, why do you have these huge machines? And he says, what, what do you mean? This is, this is the way we do things. And uh, so uh, I said, uh, if I can make you a small machine. And can you see my screen? Is, is my screen visible to you? Yes. Yes, yes one. Yes, but you can put a on machine that I made, screen. A prototype of a machine. Uh, uh, my first invention and uh, it was a little machine that was just, uh, you could push it like a, like a big push cart. And it replaced a machine that was 30 feet long. And uh, 
cost uh, in those days a very significant amount of money and it did the same job so uh, that was something that uh, wait, i need to stop sharing uh, have i stopped my sharing okay i'm back so that machine revolutionized the that business for that company and that was the launch of my career as an inventor the, uh, but for an inventor you have a slightly different way that you look at things and the way you observe things around you and uh, the way you are challenged the things that challenge you the things that make you tick there, there are uh, i've noticed that there are some things that uh, are slightly different in, in perception and uh, since the topic was how to be an inventor i'm going to talk about these things regarding perception and how one can learn to train your mind to look for things that uh, would make uh, being creative in a, in a new sphere a possibility so for me things like challenges work if you say something can't be done that's a challenge it immediately gets me working like that if you say uh, you know there's a uh, I, uh, for instance there was a in 1996 there was a an, uh, a little uh, notice in the british horological journal and that said uh, it talked about a horological invention a hor now I, i when i grew up i was passionately fond of mechanical clocks and watches and i used to open them up and i knew exactly how they worked and I, later i started repairing them and uh, and uh, the, so i taught myself uh, watch making and uh, so when that happened uh, i uh, that was i i would say that that was a preparation for what i am doing now so uh, in 1996 i saw this ad uh, uh, notice rather and it said uh, uh, share my screen and okay it says uh, horological invention and uh, this was a swiss company called brege that was celebrating their 250th anniversary and they said there's nothing significant done in the field of mechanical horology and so they opened up they had if you had an horological invention you could send in an entry and so i designed what's known as a perpetual calendar it's a device that actually changes the date automatically at the end of short and long months and uh, they invited me to switzerland and i got to see and meet some of uh, the uh, watchmakers that i had only heard about and read about uh, one guy you know I, i used to use this book called watchmaking which i constantly refer to all the time it's a it's like a manual and it tells you step by step how to make a mechanical watch i mean most people wouldn't use this i wouldn't find this interesting but i actually photocopied this book years ago and this was the guy he was known as at that time george daniel sir george daniel was known as uh, britain's living legend and uh, that experience got helped me meet sir george daniel in person and that was what actually uh, lit up a fire in me that you you know you can't quench after that when you meet someone of your dreams and for an inventor meeting someone i mean you read about inventors in books and uh, thomas edison was my childhood hero and uh, you i read about him and uh, i studied his inventions and everything about him was so fascinating and uh, then uh, similarly now george daniels was in alive at the time and i got to meet him which was amazing so that first invention of mine actually uh, was uh, i it did did uh, manage to sell it and earn some money which allowed me to indulge in doing whatever i wanted to for the next couple of years without having uh, uh what do you what do they say having to worry about uh, making my bread and butter and so i i just tell you a little difference between an innovation and an invention because those are very different things and uh, I, i need to i don't know why it is going back uh, 
So an innovation, uh, this is a book that I read. It's by Reader's Digest, Inventions That Change the World. The editor, a chap called Gordon Rattray Taylor, he says, perhaps the most misleading catchphrase learned in childhood is, is the necessity that is that necessity is the mother of invention. Most examples of invention show that the opposite is true. Invention is the mother of necessity. And so that little truth sunk in. Because when you innovate, you actually take an invention that already exists and you just try to get more mileage out of it. You try to get, uh, what should I say? You try to get uh, a little more value from it by using it a little differently or tweaking it a little bit, but it's not something new. Whereas an inventor creates something new. And that is what uh, uh, is the difference between an invention, an inventor and an innovator. Unfortunately, most of us are encouraged to be innovators, but we should be encouraged to be inventors. And as Alok mentioned earlier on, he, when I said I'm an inventor, he got a little shot. In fact, actually, I used to be very embarrassed about telling anybody what I did. They say, what do you do? And I, uh, I find it very difficult because I didn't have any <laughs> regular employment to talk of. So eventually, then I realized if I have, a many, I have this whole bunch of inventions, and then I can actually call myself an inventor. And so I started, I mean, then I used to describe myself as being an inventor. I remember uh, one of the guys at the American embassy, uh, he said, what do you do? I said, I'm an inventor. He says, you're the first inventor I've met. Wow, what a privilege. And, you know, you don't get that sort of response from <laughs> someone at the American embassy when you're going to apply for a visa. So th that's, that was something that was good. And... Uh, so now that we've, uh, I hope we've got this clarity on what's an invention and an innovation. Like for instance, Steve Jobs, when he invented uh, his Apple products, the iPhone, the iPad, and all these, you know, this little iPod and things like that, those were inventions. They were not necessities before he invented them. They became necessities after he invented. So it was the other way around. His invention created the necessity. Now we can't do without it. But before he came along with those things, they were not necessities. So it uh, shows that uh, the, our, our perspective and our understanding needs to change a little bit. So a uh, little later, uh, I'm not sure whether Marilu is still awake, but uh, um, I wanted to talk about uh, how uh, uh, an inventor doesn't really need to be familiar or to know uh, or be well-versed in the field of his invention. Uh, so in this case, uh, my next invention, which is, I'm going to skip over a couple of them, or maybe I just talk, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that, I think, maybe. Uh, let me just if I can come get back to that screen. Uh, don't share. Okay, I'll come back. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, this most significant invention, which was uh, the... Uh, development of these braille display technologies that uh, we've been working on. Some Alok and uh, Parul and all have worked with me on. Uh, but uh, when the, the invention first came about, it came about, it was conceived in ignorance. And I wanted to tell you about uh, just how that happened. I was trying to understand how Western music is uh, written. And uh, it's written like that. And around about this time, this movie Titanic uh, was playing. And then I was uh, listening to the lovely hymn that when this ship is going down, these three violinists play this beautiful hymn as it's going down. And I, know the, I knew the tune and I was running my finger over some musical score and trying to figure out how does a musician translate that these, you know, the dots and lines into the tones and pitch and whatever else they do, these musicians. And in my mind, I had this little flash of inspiration. And I said, if those dots and on those lines can you know, come out of the page, then someone who's blind would be able to read music. And that was the beginning of this Braille display technology that uh, uh, moved into. Uh, and uh, so I said, I set about making a machine that uh, would actually produce those dots and lines I mean, the dots and make them come out of the page. And that's how this affordable Braille technology was developed. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, with uh, Alok's team and uh, 
Brooks team, which was also there, we developed uh, Touche over the course of probably about a year and a half and some Braille modules as in the screen on the thing. And uh, more recently, uh, we made a, uh, I started a company also at the same time and we made a, a more affordable little machine Braille uh, reader called Hexus with another company. And there's a third company that actually buys cells from us and puts it into their devices. And so we've had a lot of fun on this journey. And some, these are some pictures of uh, Touche, which we made with uh, Sapient at the time, Alok's team and myself working together. And these are some of the pictures that were taken while testing and right up to demonstrating in Spain. And so we had a lot of fun. Invention, invention is a, lot, a very fun way to do things. And uh, I have been making more devices uh, in the last uh, year or two. But uh, inventing, I'll change course now here and talk about what, uh, what you need to do basically to change the way you think uh, and approach uh, this whole topic of invent. The first thing you probably need to do is to change your social circle to find people and associate with people who in inspire you. I wouldn't recommend those who don't inspire you, those who are very negative about everything. I wouldn't recommend hanging around with them. It doesn't actually work. You, 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 if whatever creative streak is in you would probably vanish. You'd probably just maybe just learn to, if you could learn to run and use them as fast as you can from those people, that would be good. But uh, you need to be around inspiring people to be creative, people with curious minds, people who ask questions, people who, even just being around happy people is very conducive to be, being a creative person. So the first thing is to surround yourself with people who are, cre uh, who are happy, who are inquiring, who are creative, who are inspiring in some way. They don't have to be inspiring in, uh, in uh, the field that you're working in. Uh, I, uh, someone in said that they wanted to be a counselor. I don't remember who, but uh, that is something that uh, a counselor tends to be a, a person in that role of being able to, to guide and inspire. And uh, it's very important that uh, both from the counselor's point of view and from the person who's being counseled that uh, both of them, uh, uh, you know, gel together because there's a, that's a combination that it's a very positive working combination. So you surround yourself with people who inspire you. You surround yourself with happy people. You surround yourself with people who are creative. And then you talk about problems. Then you talk about problems, not just in society, everything. You talk about problems. And uh, when you have uh, problems being discussed in an environment that's conducive to creative thinking, then what happens is you, your mind automatically begins to work towards solving those problems. And finding a solution to those problems. And uh, that is something that uh, uh, it fires me up and it gets me creative very fast. If someone says, you know, this is a problem, can you help us solve it? My mind immediately begins to work, but it has to be the, 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 the question and the, the request has to come from someone who inspires me, someone whom I respect. If it's some guy who, who who I don't respect, or then I'm not going to be fired up. I'm not going to be inspired enough to do anything about that. So uh, you need to, to get that circle right. And so then, when you have a problem uh, that comes up, then you can you can you know, immediately focus on how to find a solution to that. Then you need to be observant. Also, you can pick up a lot of things from nature and. Um, uh, you can pick up things from uh, the places you least expect. Like, for instance, I'm, I have zero knowledge about music. I'm totally, uh, uh, what should I say, ignorant in that realm. But my greatest inspiration came from my ignorance and in trying to understand something that I was ignorant of. So when you start from scratch, you approach without a lot of the, uh, what should I say, the ideas that are in your, put into your mind or without the learning that you might have to otherwise unlearn to approach a problem uh, from a different perspective. So when you approach a problem from ignorance and try to learn and observe things yourself, 
then it makes a huge, huge difference in finding a solution. You, you get inspired because then you, you don't really, you're not limited by uh, what you're taught is the way things should be, but you are, your mind is opened up to the way things can be and the way, uh, you know, way forward may be totally different and may have nothing to do with what you're observing in the first place. So that's another interesting thing to do, to try and uh, uh, be observant and, uh, and uh, what should I say? Pick up points that uh, thing. Persistent also. I mean, reminded of uh, Alok had mentioned, I think, somewhere in the introduction that uh, Edison said that uh, invention is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And that's uh, uh, it's from a point of view of slogging, <laughs> that can be discouraging. But if you are persistent, and I'll give you another perspective on the same thing uh, when I'm ending with this. Another person who invented the, uh, the, the this beautiful vacuum cleaner that we now have called the bagless vacuum cleaner is James Dyson. And Dyson, he spent, I mean, he did something like 5,000 plus trial, different types of uh, experiments before over a period of five years. That's an average of three experiments or trials a day before he came up with this beautiful vacuum cleaner, the bagless vacuum cleaner. And he was very persistent. And uh, that eventually result. So then there was a story, Hoover copied his machine and then he had to uh, you know, fight against them and things like that. Initially, he wasn't accepted. That's something that you need to, as an inventor or as a creative person, recognize the fact that you are in a slightly different group from the, the rest of the crowd because you're not going to be accepted and what you propose will almost certainly not be accepted by the, what should I say, the, the people around your immediate circle where you can function. So you've got to persevere, you've got to stick to it no matter how long it takes. And then you don't look at these 5,000 steps of or in Edison's case, thousand uh, failures before he made the light bulb. You don't look at them as failure at all. You look at them as steps on paths that you do not need to venture out any further. You you finish with them. You know that they lead nowhere. You use choose a different path after that. So they are not failure. They are just a different path. And uh, well, they say all roads lead to Rome. They all roads are not the best road and may not be the shortest Rome's <laughs> road. So you got to. Maybe you have to try them all out and eventually you will uh, come to reach Rome. So the other thing is to be creative and inventive is to like what you're doing. I mean, it's not possible for everyone to be in that position uh, if they are, especially if they're working in a, at a, uh, doing a job that they don't really like or it's not of their choosing. But uh, you can actually be creative in a way to try and figure out how to make that job a little more exciting or a little less mundane or a little more exciting. So those are things that uh, you would want to uh, try and be creative about. Or the other thing is to, to sw use your spare time to do all this uh, stuff. And uh, uh, if, you, if you can uh, kind of change course uh, so in such a way that you do what you have to do because you're, you have no choice. Try and be creative a little bit and make it more exciting. And think, think of uh, solving someone else's problems and it normally takes your mind off your own. And the whole thing about invention and being creative is to make someone else, someone else happy, someone else's life easier. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, I don't remember the whole quote, but right at the end he says, Success is to make someone's life easier, to make someone breathe easier because you lived, that's success. I'm, I'm just uh, paraphrasing it, but that's, uh, I, I don't, I'm not saying it as nicely as he put it, but if someone else's life is little easier, made little easier because you lived, that is success. So for an inventor, you actually invent for someone else. You don't invent for yourself where, as far as possible. You, you actually do something to make someone else's life easier to make add value to someone else's life to make uh, things better. So when you focus on someone else and take shift the focus off yourself, things become a lot easier doing what you want to do. 
And uh, I'm not sure how much time I have. I look, uh, do I have two, three minutes more? Yeah. Okay, so I will just go back. Yeah, Paul, two, three more minutes. Yeah. And then so we'll open up for questions. Yeah, okay. So I just want to tell you about something. Now, when you have uh, someone who inspires you and you spend, if you can spend time with, with them, you never know, you're not really wasting time by spending time with a person, uh, you know, just talking uh, mundane stuff. Because uh, I was talking to this friend of mine who's blind and I was walking with her down the street and I asked her, I said, tell me what's on your wish list. And she said, uh, I want to be able to draw on paper. And so I thought about that and I said, that's maybe easier to go to the moon than to be able to draw on paper. But anyway, because she was someone who I admired and she was a friend and the request came from her, I ended up making this little simple tool which I named Roulette. This is just last year, end of 2019 and last year. And uh, it's similar to what uh, what a seamstress would use to mark patterns on paper. The only thing is, it actually uh, embosses the paper with a tactile line, and the line can be felt on the top surface. So uh, normally, you uh, when uh, someone who's blind embosses paper, they emboss it on the front surface, and then they flip the paper over and feel on the reverse. So that is the way. Uh, they read. So when you emboss paper, you emboss it on the front and read it on the reverse. Unless, of course, you're using a, 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 an embosser like a printer or something. But it's still, it's very difficult to do that. Even if you're trying to draw on paper, you if you draw a right angle triangle and the right angle is on the right side, when you flip the paper, it goes on the left side. And so it's very difficult to actually mirror these things in your mind. And even if you're blind, it's not one of the best things to do. So that's why a lot of people drop out of uh, higher education because it's so difficult. It becomes progressively more difficult to learn subjects like geometry and stuff like that. So I made this thing called roulette. And the roulette actually is, produces tactile images on the front surfaces of any paper, ordinary paper. And that was just done this in the last one year. And uh, that, that is something that uh, was uh, my most recent invention. But uh, I wanted to say, uh, re-emphasize this point that you, no conversation is unimportant. You're not really wasting your time by having a little conversation with someone who you think you're not getting value from because you never know where you're going to get inspiration from. There are some people who say, you know, I can't, my time is too precious. I, it's, it's too expensive for me to have a conversation with someone on the street because I'm busy. But you, you really are, uh, if you don't take that, make that little effort to be polite and talk to someone on the street, you might miss out on an opportunity of, of thinking creatively or coming up with a creative solution to some problem that is voiced by someone who would, you might have otherwise never met, I mean, never had a, an opportunity to share an idea with, or someone who doesn't really know that they are imparting a little fire stoking a seed or planting a seed in your mind of, of a problem that needs to be addressed or a solution to, uh, to uh, what should I say, um, that you can work with. And uh, the, talking, uh, I just uh, reading Andrea's comment, I think it was, or Stephanie, I think, is talking to strangers. And that, that, that does make uh, a huge, huge uh, difference if you can talk to someone and uh, because what it's like reading a book, you just might pick up something from some unknown chapter somewhere or a little image or illustration in a book that has no bearing on, you wouldn't have picked up under normal circumstances, a newspaper. You don't know what's coming in the next day's news, but you you can get a little bit of inspiration from there. And it's, it's fantastic. It's always exciting. You've just got to, be persevere, uh, persevere, be persistent, choose your right circle of friends and surround yourself with people who inspire you if you can't find them. Read about them in books, uh, wherever, wherever, but just uh, it, it requires a little bit of shift from doing what you normally would do and uh, creativity and, uh, and 
what should I say, inspiration to be inventive just will begin to flow. It's like a chef. Uh, you would put a whole lot of ingredients and give them and they would be able to churn out something just like that. Uh, it, it's, and you add to the ingredients, you might get a lovely, more spicy meal. And if you chuck in a few more veggies or whatever, your meal might just get, uh, you might get a bigger platter to deal with. And, and if you throw in some more stuff, you might just have a banquet available to you. So it's, it's, it all depends on how, how you, uh, how you absorb, uh, observe and pick up from wherever you can these little seeds of inspiration, seeds that you can be creative with. Thanks, I hope someone has inspired a little bit, a little fire has been lit somewhere. If there are any questions, I'm more than open to questions. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can type your question in the chat box. And since it's a small, wonderful community, you can unmute yourself and ask it as well, whichever or whatever is more convenient for you. Type your question in the chat window, or if you want to speak, you can speak it now. We have time for one or two questions, and then we have another session, and then maybe we can take the questions at the end. <clears throat> Manuel has a question, uh, question, Paul, would you, uh, are most of your inventions now for the blind? Uh, I, I think that's my calling um, uh, in life because I, I find them the most inspiring bunch of people to work with because uh, as some, someone, to, someone told me that, uh, 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 you know, being blind, everything they do is a challenge and they have to overcome challenges constantly. So if you are, if you are working with them and you are observant, you, you constantly observe every, the way they handle challenges every day and everything they do. And, uh, and if you're like uh, me who gets inspired by that and challenged by that, then you want to develop solutions to try and help them make their lives a little easier and it's never been more fulfilling or I wish they say a happy existence these last 12 years that I've been working with them. It's been fantastic. Every day is a, is a, there's a lot of excitement, just a lot of excitement, something new to do. Amazing, sorry. So the question uh, of uh, the invention was from Andrea, sorry. Uh, by yeah. the way, Manuel wants to have you on your podcast. So. Uh, that is something which I would let you and Manu figure that out. Uh, and then Andrew is suggesting you to come and, and visit. Will definitely try and visit that university. Yeah. Yeah. Join the worst. Would Would you be open to join, Paul? Yeah, I'm open to join. I'm open to join anything. <laughs> okay, amazing. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's always interesting to hear you. Uh, People who looked at Touche, uh, I personally feel connected to that idea because the way I would like to remember, and it, it is so true, it's actually the world's cheapest Kindle for, for the blind. And now for such things, you don't need huge amount of money. You don't need huge amount of uh, stuff to get started. What is really very important is to have the belief and the ability to uh, uh, get, uh, get going. I love the quote of your quote, Paul, uh, invention is the mother of the necessity. And it's so true because a lot of time we yeah, even yeah. don't realize what we, what we need. So actually, uh, hello, that's, that, that's a quote I picked up from uh, Reader's Digest, uh, inventions that change the world, the editor wrote. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fantastic, but it, it, it changes your perspective when someone puts things yeah. so clearly and lucidly. Yep. In a world which is so much fixated with innovation, I guess invention needs to be given its due credit uh, yeah. as well. So before we move on to the next session, uh, let's do a little bit of more exercise. Uh, the hmm. first question, what is the thing that you haven't used in the past six months? The stuff that you have not used in the past six months, you can type that out in the chat window. Stuff that you have not used in the past six months.
Michelle wore clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Shoes, suit. Okay. A plane? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. A uh, lot of things that probably we would be able to do uh, in in twenty twenty one. At least in India, the vaccination has started. So maybe after four months, some of the stuff that we are writing, we will be able to do so again. Though it's a different question whether we should, whether we really want to do it now, given given the lockdown. Uh, given the completely different experience. Uh, the next question, which bird you saw last? Which bird you saw last? Bird? Bird. Yeah, boy. Which bird you saw last? Okay, pigeon. Oh yeah, that we see a lot in, in Delhi, places around Delhi. Beater, okay. Michelle, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> awesome. I mean, th this is something which, when I tried this question, a lot of time people uh, were just not able to answer it because, you know, maybe we just don't observe uh, them uh, around us, but they are here. With that question, I would like now to hand it over to Parul Bansal. Parul, over to you. Okay, let me just share my screen first. <laughs> and probably then I start. I need to change my some quick system settings. It's not allowing me to share the screen. Okay. Uh -oh. One second, something is wrong. So at the bottom, you will see the share screen button. It would be in I green. I think I'm having, uh, some security to uh, security settings for grant access. Just give me two seconds. Okay. I haven't tested this before. Saying to go to settings, preferences, share screen, enter full screen, then button. It should be shareable. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll share it with you, considering I'm not able to share my screen somehow. I'm not sure why it's not allowing me. Okay, okay. Uh, let me turn my camera off. Maybe then I can. I'm not sure. You want me to download your presentation? Um, uh, no, I'll have to uh, send you the latest one. Just a second. I mean, but I'll try also. There's something wrong. Just a second. I'll try one more time. And uh, otherwise, I'll send. But guys, just give me two seconds. Something real bad today. Okay. Is there any other way I can uh, share my uh, or maybe someone else is sharing the screen? Someone has not closed it or something. I don't Sure, what's wrong? It never happens like this. I'm stopping my video just a second. Uh -huh. Allow. I'm not sharing my screen. If you want, I can.
little bit of technical snag. We should be back. Uh, I've made the settings. I have to quit and reopen. So just give me two seconds. I'll have to rejoin mm -hmm. Zoom. I'm going to ask uh, what am I working on now. So I'm just going to share my screen for a minute and uh, yeah. send a little screenshot if you don't mind while Parul is. Yep, absolutely. You can actually share the presentation because we send out. Yeah. A note, okay, actually, so I will put, put all this stuff. Okay, so these are little braille cells that I made uh, not too long ago. And uh, they can be used as toys to train people to uh, uh, train kids to teach them braille. They can also be used in play things, you know, like lifts on to indicate for the deaf blind, which flow they are on or, you know, give them little basic uh, essential information on knobs like you know rotary knobs where you have to turn a knob to a particular setting or something like that but you get output in braille and so these are little braille cells that i made recently and i, I was actually trying to use them in a, a pad like this to help uh, with stem education teaching them math and so this is uh, where the same little cells where top right corner of yours thing is uh, i do have a working prototype of that and uh, if they're all cascaded like this we could make a big pad and this would be very useful for helping them learn math and because you know math is arranged in rows and columns and uh, the existing way of learning math is using a tailor frame which is really really tough and that's why a lot of kids drop out of learning these stem subjects because math is tough and diagrams are tough so i'm trying to work with these tactile drawings and this other stuff of variants of braille display technology that will make uh, making these devices more affordable and more complicated devices basically more affordable so that's something that uh, is uh, on the on the animal it's different stages of improvement and uh, this is a quote that i ended one of my ted talks with and I, I didn't quite uh, end with Alok, you had said uh, Edison's quote, it's 99% perspiration and 10% and 1% inspiration. But what happens is when you enjoy what you're doing, it ceases to be work. And that's why Edison could say this, I never worked a day in my life, it was all fun. And that's something that uh, I can identify with totally. I don't feel like I'm working at all. I just feel like I'm in, enjoying myself. And that's basically True. what I'm working with. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's amazing. I'm waiting for Parul to come back. Let me actually... I must tell you, uh, for those of you who are listening, uh, while trying to do work on this uh, subject of making tactile drawings, Subir, who is on, also on, on one of the windows over there, actually was working in parallel with me doing the same thing without, okay, I think Parul is back. And we ended up doing exactly the same thing, the same approach, to a tactile pad, working totally separately, unknown to each other at the time. So that's really fantastic. So I was meant to reply to him, but I, I'm using the opportunity now to, <laughs> that's amazing. And it's, okay. it's a forum like this that would make things uh, like-minded people get together. It's really fantastic. Okay, Parul is back. Parul, we can see you. Parul. It's just connecting you. to audio on. Yeah. Parul, we can't hear you. 
if you can hear us parul we can't hear you rest of you can hear me right is one to... yeah yeah okay yeah, i think yeah. parul we can see your screen uh, we are not able to hear you <laughs> these are the moment when you 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 get to understand the meaning of the word anxiety <laughs> you we use it <laughs> it's like murphy law when something has to go wrong we will will go wrong for sure <laughs> i've asked her to share the presentation so that she could dial in and and i can and and i can show her presentation presentation i think she got i got, i think her screen did come up for a minute yeah yeah she she's having some sort of uh, uh, i guess she's using someone else uh, laptop maybe there is some new security setting there while we are waiting quick question for uh, paul samarth here uh, hi sir hi uh, uh, i'm just curious i mean uh, are there any difference in the way you work uh, like uh, for most of us who are working we have a clear separation between uh, work days and the weekends i'm just curious to know uh, how you really think about that and, uh, and manage that uh, i don't have any separation between work days and uh, weekends because the thing is uh, this whole thing of being creative and inventive it's a type of obsessive compulsive disorder, <laughs> disorder. <laughs> it can be clubbed <laughs> so so you can't really stop stop your mind from working and being excited and curious about stuff so that is something that that mm -hmm. uh, yeah you, i can't switch off and uh, i can't uh, separate so and to make matters worse a significant part of my workshop is at home so then you can't you get that that the home and the workshop and everything is all in one then you tend to you, you just you, you just can't switch off summer there's no separation mm -hmm. it's like yeah basically. that's good so to so hear thanks for how do you how do you arrange the uh, arrange the funds for your research and inventions is it your own money or like people invest yeah. how does okay. it work i'll tell you how i did it initially uh, right up when i just finished uh, college i started i i got a job for a short period of time very short period of time where i actually worked for this company this pickle company doing their software and uh, so i there, there was a, you know that was the only probably short uh, span and i did work as a programmer for a couple of months so those were the only two two occasions where i was actually employed by someone else but when i made this first machine the the gherkin the gherkin grading machine uh, what happened was uh, that's when i got my first uh, what should i say business uh, aspect kicked in and i actually made and sold a few machines that uh, was quite significant at, at that time so which i managed to bank those uh, funds and uh, use them for uh, my onward experimenting then came along the perpetual calendar which a swiss company acquired for some time and then actually 911 killed the entire industry but for anyway i i did make a little money at that time so i was using that money to keep me going and uh, parul is back yeah i'm i freaked out now i'm lost <laughs> so no no i don't worry i have shared my screen can everyone see this oh thank god <laughs> all right you, you can see it parol right yes i can see so should i start now yeah, yeah. absolutely i i was telling everyone that parol now understands the meaning of the word anxiety <laughs> yeah <laughs> now i know it 
oh, okay so uh, that's my introduction hopefully most of you would have uh, seen a lot of the rings and uh, this is how i would like to start uh, my introduction with saying like i don't know half of you half as well as i should like and i like less than half of you half as well as you deserve <laughs> so uh, so this is a famous line from when bilbo is just about to make that uh, beautiful exit out of everyone and he just vanishes so something like that so i'll vanish and i'll start with my ppt uh next slide alok yeah so uh, today so i uh, just disclaimer so uh, um, there are only two three pictures of birds in a cage uh, which i have used from internet rest remaining all are from my backyard including this one so this is rufus treepy which i really love to see it has a long tail and the beautiful colors and i really enjoy watching this every day it, it comes it drinks water uh, initially only one of them used to come now it's a pair so it's it's amazing to see how their uh, like their community just keeps growing just like yeah so next slide yeah so the the entire journey started uh, when uh, i actually was in a college in college i was doing my graduation and a friend of mine had actually bought uh two a pair of birds just like these and uh, they were in a cage i got excited to see these birds but at the same time i felt like uh, uh, like if they were just free and i could still have them i wanted them to be free but i wanted to have them at the same time so how would it be but uh, i just uh, discussed that idea with her and then i just uh, uh, forgot about the entire thing and i completed my graduation i joined office and i forgot everything and then uh, gradually when i started my office and this lockdown period appeared and just before this uh, i think 6 months or one year back i got a leg injury and along the same time when i was sitting at home i started keeping water for birds and uh, uh, there the actual journey started uh, from uh, keeping the water for birds initially it was only for pigeons as everyone mentioned uh, which is the last bird you saw and most of the people replied with saying pigeon uh, so it it was similar to me pigeon and crow were the two birds which were the friends for all uh, so a uh, next slide and then i realized that it was not very easy for them i started exploring like where where are all the sparrows because everyone was saying that sparrows are vanishing uh, but uh, then i just looked around near the parks is there any like do i still have sparrows near me and all so uh, the bottom picture is clicked by my friend so she saw Uh, two sparrows taking bath uh, on the water just collected near the road side and uh, it was very interesting to see that they were they were still enjoying uh, because the size is small they can even uh, take bath in that small pot pothole but if just imagine that if i if i asked you to take bath in muddy water every day would you do it like who who would do it nobody like you are taking this to clean yourself up clean your feathers and uh, keep you disease free and but uh, you have to take bath in a muddy water and then you have to drink the same water uh, the, to top it all and sometimes you don't even find this because we are just trying to clean our roads so much that we don't leave that one drop of water for them and it it's it's really tough for them Uh, uh and i to be honest uh, the first time i saw this uh, uh, the honey bee kind of thing like drinking water uh, in the same pot where i had kept the water for birds i was stunned like i i didn't know <laughs> they drank water and and i, I had no uh, recollection from my childhood seeing a bee drinking water i thought that if she will sit there and she will just drown it so i couldn't think beyond that because it's so lightweight and you would be amazed to uh, know that in summers when it's very hot it's above 40 degrees in delhi you know and they actually float on water they like swimming they actually swim on water and it's it's beautiful to watch them just floating on the water like this <laughs> yeah and then sometimes they do drown then you have to pick use a leaf to just pick them up and just keep them outside they dry and then they fly away <laughs> so it's it's very beautiful So, uh, so next slide. 
yeah so then uh, so then i i uh, eventually i ke- i ke- started keeping water for these birds on daily basis and uh, gradually i realized that it's not just pigeon or crow or manna or sparrow which were turning up but there were other species as well like white eye rufous reapy um, then brahmi starling so there were a lot lot of them i i didn't expect so many to like so many of them to turn up and i didn't even know that so many of them are there around me like uh, uh, it's it's so obvious that in uh, in this uh, modern era we don't know our neighbor's name it's literally like that they might just pass a smile but we don't know their names half of them i have no clue what their names are but uh, uh, like you can just click their picture you google it and you know their name now <laughs> at least you know the species <laughs> you, you 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 know as uh, just like you know your neighbor you know them now and they know me so initially they were not comfortable also so if uh, if they are drinking water and i always get excited i start running around like okay i have seen a bird i have seen a bird and i used to go there and in, as soon as they will see me even a slight movement in the window they will just fly away but gradually with time uh, it so happened now then okay these are the people who are keeping water daily they are keeping it fresh they are cleaning the pots so now they don't move so fast at least they stay for some time and then they fly away like they complete their job whatever they are to do and then they fly away uh next slide yeah so, uh, so the, the joy of having fresh water is completely different although they were enjoying that muddy water too but now the big size birds also who can't actually get into the pothole to ba- take bath they also started coming they started taking bath and uh, drinking water and uh, the smaller ones they started coming in bunches so you can see like six or eight of them and uh, uh, gradually the number is growing now they are 12 so <laughs> it's interesting to see how they keep on growing uh, uh, so uh, you can unmute yourself i have a question for the audience now so do you know uh, uh, what all things two birds do like how much water do they drink what is the main use of water for them anyone wants to answer the question bathing and drinking B- bathing and or drinking fun. or keeping them fun or play okay keeping them cool but <laughs> but why do they need to bath daily <laughs> yeah I, i never thought of like why they need to take a bath daily <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like they're just birds they're so tiny they like so so i i just googled and i realized that uh, Uh, they need very little water for drinking their body doesn't cons- like uh, need lot of water as such but uh, they need uh, they need to take bath daily or ma- like many times a day in uh, hot areas like ours so because they need to keep their body cool so they use uh, water and taking bath as a technique to keep their wo- body cool and also so that they are disease free they uh, you won't believe like one bird takes bath five times like one shot then it will just clean in its feather and it's not satisfied it will take another shot and then third shot and fourth shot so it keeps on bathing till it feels that it's actually clean so they they bath regularly like it's amazing to watch them bath so uh, so they uh, get to the next slide uh, so next slide has videos uh, one more click yeah and uh, so play you can play them uh, look one uh, you can just uh, do next and it will play oh oh uh, okay uh, no no it was oh i think it's not embedded because it might have been playing from my laptop you're mute that is fine because it is uh, not embedded in the presentation that's why i think so yeah, yeah that's, fine. that's fine that's fine paro that's that fine that was the most interesting part actually when they actually bath <laughs> so let let me try my browser maybe i i can you want me to you want me to stop share i will and then i can share back if it doesn't works on yours uh, yeah uh, no no actually what i'll do i'll uh, i'll share the video videos in the last from my whatsapp maybe uh, let's let's continue Okay fine. 
yeah so uh, so go to the next slide then i'll share all the videos later on yeah so then we were hit by the lockdown the the feed, like i i started only with watering i didn't feed them at all i was so strict i will not feed them because then they will do shit here <laughs> and i don't want them to be shitting around so i only uh, fed them water and then the lockdown hit me bad and i was like okay this didn't happen close your eyes and pretend it's all a bad dream and I, i'll just get through the lockdown it's two months three months but that was not the case it was a long long lockdown so uh so next slide oh uh, next slide sorry <laughs> and then somebody told me uh, somebody is my husband he said okay all you have to decide is what to do with this time which is given to you and then i decided okay i will start feeding them so uh, next slide is about feeding them now yeah so then i started feeding them and uh, to my surprise more birds started turning around now because i think they like food more than water <laughs> so more birds started coming in the even i used to see parrots around my house but they used to be very a little far like maybe they because of the color they feel that uh, they catch more attraction and uh, they don't want to get into that so but uh, then i started keeping food i realized that one day a, a parrot was slowly moving like this and the you will even notice that the birds walk in different patterns. patterns like uh, there are few birds they uh, which hop so they will do like this with two feet together they will jump some are like they will walk and i'm always surprised like you have wings while you walking so you have to first <laughs> i i have still not uh, used to the thing like they are walking around when they have wings they can just keep flying if i have wings i'll just fly <laughs> i don't know but then again i googled and it it uh, it uh, it happens that uh, they walk because it takes lot of effort to flip your wings and for small distances they prefer walking so they don't fly all the time <laughs> yeah they don't yeah so my husband gave an example like they don't use their cars all the time they they walk <laughs> <laughs> so it's similar so uh, then i also saw this eagle who was just waiting so that uh, like it can actually catch few birds because they, their main source of food is small birds so it it was interesting to see the like food chain but uh, uh, to my surprise it caught a squirrel instead of the bird so that that bird got lucky <laughs> uh, so uh, next slide please yeah it's yeah as so be it mentioning it's uh, it's actually i i actually am seeing the ecosystem growing here again these are videos so i'll i'll put the videos in the from the whatsapp so next slide okay so uh, so now as e we were talking about ecosystem also so i also searched what's in habitat so habitat is actually food water space and breeding space so we have suffice to food and water space we have captured their houses so the remaining trees are their space that is all that is left and uh, then the final thing is nesting or breeding so uh, i tried putting this one nest around my in my house so so these two the this pair of birds actually try i to explore the vent inside initially i cut out a cardboard that amazon box we have and i did a, this big hole i thought that they are big birds they will need big holes to get inside the nest and it was interesting to see that uh, uh, like if if you have this size bird it can actually get into this small hole they actually need small holes because they just fit themselves in to get into the nest they don't want big holes otherwise when they actually give lay eggs and everything some predator will come so they don't want that they want tiny holes to get inside although they exploded but because of my too much of curiosity going there and coming back they didn't actually nest here and they nested in the tree just next to that the back tree so they still they were close to me and now their family has grown from 2 to i think 5 there there are three more so probably if the video was shown i could have already shown you the population growing uh, so next slide uh but, but preferably what they they prefer is holes like these in the walls which are embedded during the construction because they feel that it's natural it was always there it matches the background nothing is off they want some hidden kind of things so this one i have taken from internet because i wanted to show this one because if you see uh, this uh, you can see that uh, it is a shape which uh, of bricks which is embedded in the wall so the top brick then the three bricks and then the bottom brick so it's a shape 
uh, it's a nest and you can see four uh, uh, nails also so it's actually a nest which is embedded during the construction uh, in the brick uh, brick wall itself so or maybe some people nowadays use eco friendly kind of pipes which are extended in their top of the roofs and uh, there they like to nest more as compared to the other nest which we provide them uh, it's kind of a disguise kind of thing they hide in their same matching colors and nobody knows that they are there so that kind of thing uh, next yeah so few learnings uh, the first learning that uh, even the migratory birds stop at your place <laughs> so the yellow one <laughs> so that was interesting it, it 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 was just luck by chance that i was i went outside and it was there uh, and this is the only picture i have of this bird and i don't know the name of this one <laughs> still now but uh, it was interesting to see that uh, different different kind of birds the migratory ones the regular ones they all come to your place uh, once they start uh, knowing that you are keeping something for them next yeah so the first learning is that we are not alone we are definitely not alone and we need to keep our eyes open and feeders will we should keep the feeders for them because they've already taken their habitat and all other space for them they can't uh, find food they have to struggle a lot especially the tiny ones because they can't fly long distances also so they are very much dependent on us for growing otherwise they will be extinct for sure uh, you will be surprised to see the speed they don't stop at the same place they are always like uh, like before you, like more than we blink our eye or do anything they are very quick they are so quick uh, they have conversations so if you see the bottom one on the right they are they are having a conversation over chapati or lunch for saying so and it's very interesting like the way they talk they change voices uh, they might have different voices during breeding season and uh, they have a different voice for their attacker when they're fighting for space like okay this is my space they will make different noises same bird but different voice uh, so it's it's all very amazing to know uh, next slide yeah that uh, any day they are a delight to watch and uh, once they start knowing you they also start posing for you so if you see all of them the first one is trying to just push me back like uh, why are you actually uh, seeing me uh, the second one they are just uh, playing around they are hanging from a wire and uh, they are just playing around they, the this was early in the morning 5:30 around and they actually were just uh, hovering about around my head and then going back to the wire then playing and they would do all sorts of things then the, this the center one is again a very different one this come this is very seasonal i see it only once a year like one month in a year um, so these two are barbets but these are different kind of barbets and uh, this is a pigeon and you can see the pigeon and the dove really posing hard for me like okay just click me ignore everyone else <laughs> yes copper smith uh, i am uh, i'm not sure it's copper smith i think the middle one is copper smith bad bit uh yeah so next slide yeah networking so the next and yes nice process <laughs> so next thing which i have learned is networking they have a faster network than us so as i mentioned that when i started it was just pigeon and crow it grew it grew like anything initially i knew only three or four species of birds now i know around 20 and uh, it's it's so amazing that uh, they just see and they make noises so if i have not kept water or food for one day suppose and uh, as soon as i go out and i keep it so one or two will make noise then four will make noise and you can hear the noise passing around and suddenly all the gang will just come for drinking water so you know that they have a strong network they keep on telling everyone that uh, this is a source this happens every day you don't need to go to a distant place you can stay here and then they start staying <laughs> so the the network is really really great there is no doubt about it <laughs> next slide yeah and uh, uh, they okay the one is just outside my window but i can't show because my computer actually hang because of that uh, camera thing only so so i'm not showing it right now uh, so it's a kindergarten and uh, it does not happen overnight as I, as i said it happened around like maybe one year or one and a half year gradually it grew in it grows in six months so every six months it grows at the next level next class comes in your kindergarten uh, and uh, 
it's it's amazing as i mentioned that some of them hop some of them walk and uh, some of them pose uh, very like as if they are elites so the ones with different colors they behave like elites and they actually pose and walk in like as if they are wearing stilettos <laughs> so it's it's a really uh, amazing to see how they behave uh, okay next Uh, so yeah, so interesting facts which I have learned. Few of them. Uh, the bottom one on the left, if you see the bar belt, the green one. Um, I didn't know that a bird can have a mustache, but this one has. Uh, it's not very visible in the the picture, but it has the just like a mouse. It has four or three uh, mustaches <laughs> hair coming out of its nose. Uh, then the top one. Uh, I didn't know that there is a green pigeon, but uh, for two days i was uh, utterly shocked uh, as if i am going color blind and i there's something wrong with my eyes i'm seeing the pigeon in different colors uh, then i thought i have google why i'm not googling <laughs> so i googled there's something called as green pigeon and it, it so this green pigeon is from internet because um, I, i was so so stunned i didn't click a picture for this one <laughs> so i just saw this and the final one the right side one uh, in oh, i applied the wrong picture so in this one it's not clear but on the other side of its face the other side uh, it has a mole hair so i didn't know that birds have moles and i have seen two three different birds they have different different color moles and it's it's so amazing i i have no idea that okay it's not we humans are very special we have all these kind of uh, bird marks and recognition marks all other creatures also have these things there's not just dogs who are patchy the birds are equally patchy and pattern like it's very interesting so next screen yeah so how to set up a bird watching station uh, so bird watching station what i have done i'll try to show although i might fail to show it properly so this is my window So what I do, I generally sit around here, and you can see out. I don't know why you can see. So I can. What I do, I just play hide and seek like this, and uh, I've applied a placed a camera also here. So uh, whenever they come or I hear a sound like they're lot very noisy, <laughs> so you can hear the sound and you can just peep through it, and you can uh, place your camera here, and then you can click lot of pictures. So you need to place your uh, water feeding, uh, water feeding stuff or uh, food feeding stuff feeders in such places near the doors or windows where you can just hide and see. Because they even see the shadows behind the curtain. That is the surprise to me. Like sometimes I'm just hiding, but because of the light, they can see my shadow outside, and they just fly away. so they are very clever to very intelligent species i say uh, so next slide yeah so uh, as i mentioned that uh, it's really hide and seek uh, again i was uh, so the this one the top one in the middle the small circle uh, so uh, uh, we called it uh, we call it uh, as bulbul here i don't know the technical name but um, i thought that bulbul is just one kind of bulbul uh, uh, it's a uh, i think this is red uh, red checker red cheek or something bulbul so it's a different species of the same bird and uh, uh, as it happens that i went to my friend's house uh, and uh, i was just climbing the stairs and um, i just saw uh, through one glass window i just saw her and i got so excited like you have a different kind of bird than me <laughs> and I, and i sat and i asked her to get the picture clicked then finally she got one for me to just get to this presentation <laughs> so uh, then you see the eagles as i said so there are two three kind of uh, eagles and all the kingfisher it just keeps on sitting here because it's winters here so it just takes a sun bath every day every day it comes it sits at the same spot uh, so it's a uh, it's a ground uh, at the bottom of this building so uh, whenever there are some flies coming out or something it just takes them in his mouth it eats and then again it sits here that that's its job not yeah it it doesn't do anything else it just it's every day uh okay so next slide yeah uh, again it had a video of the sneaker so uh, although i'm keeping it for birds but there are few other people who are eating the food so the squirrel also just takes a grab at some of the food and brushes uh, before i catch it catch hold of it so uh, earlier squirrels were also very far off 
like on the trees but now i've actually seen them jumping from the tree to my uh, roof and then uh, running eating and then again jumping back to the tree so it's interesting that they almost come to the main door and one day uh, a bird actually came inside my house then i have to actually directed like okay go go outside you can't come inside because you might get stuck between the walls and you will get hurt just go outside so it's very uh, interesting like to push them outside also is very interesting so next slide please yeah so i wanted to show this one because in this one i'll, I'll demonstrate so what happens the squirrel is eating and every time it eats it may it pushes her ears like this in excitement so it's it's very amazing to see like why it's so is it finding so beautiful uh, like it likes a very nice to eat or what i don't know so next uh, slide please okay so feeder so uh, everybody when they are starting they feel that oh uh, how can i start this will be cumbersome this this and that but most of us have some if we are indians then we definitely have earthen pots at our home because uh, every festival we buy something so every festival we are buying something and we will have some diya something or the other we'll have at have at our place or you can buy one earthen feeder from amazon or any other place it's easily available in local markets also so and then you just put water or the food which you want to um, feed them with and you can actually the with water there's one thing then you need to keep a brush with you the, every day you just clean it a little and then put the water and keep the feeder back because otherwise uh, uh, if it gets dirty then some people get the that fear of bird flu and everything so uh, better take precautions <laughs> than being sorry so you can do that one thing otherwise it's very easy just change the water every day and nothing special um, they just love bathing i'm they they really love bathing and the same feeder can be used for feeding the food as well yeah paul can help invent something to keep them out <laughs> okay so next slide please i tell a lot of what you're doing uh, arun yeah so but yeah prove that the ones that i made and yeah but you can create something for our birds too now <laughs> 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 so yeah proof that the aliens exist so this is one of my small pot which i keep uh, i keep uh, so i don't know about the english but we call it rusk uh, so i just break it down and keep it for them it's a little crunchy and it's made of uh, semolin so uh, so it's it's it's, inter uh, it's interesting and by every 4 hours it's empty like the bottom plate so we start with the full one in morning and every 3 4 hours is gone so uh, earlier i used to think that they are very less then they are so tiny how much will they eat <laughs> and then i realized no <laughs> and then the next interesting thing is i used to keep it for the food started only for fun in the lockdown so i was not dedicated i used to keep it and then i would forget but what happened that uh, one day i got a plate and because i got a plate i could hear lot of chirping around my house they were literally at my door like they were making the noise that okay where is the food you haven't kept it today like okay sorry <laughs> and then i got up and before i even brush my teeth i had to keep the food for them because they were chirping like and they like where is the food where is the food so just like kids so the same kindergarten behavior it it's very amazing so the next slide <laughs> uh again video shit i'll have to share a lot of videos yeah so this this i saw a parrot they were they actually took some berries from the tree and they were eating it so he actually peeled it off with his mouth and then it ate only the internal part of the fruit so i like to share all the videos or maybe let let me first share the videos now uh so yeah so the a uh, uh, proper message is like not all treasure is silver and gold mate uh, even the nature environment birds animals all of them are equally treasureful if you see them otherwise oh next slide yeah so uh, other message is like you want the sky with birds or without birds just like your wallpaper <laughs> so it's up to you thank you and i'll share my screen now i look i'll try to share my screen and acha okay uh, just just give me a second i'll i'll share the videos on my screen just a second
Alok, if you're talking, you're on mute. Yeah, Alok, it's mute. Sorry, sorry. Uh, what I was saying that uh, what I really love about this idea of bird watching, uh, it doesn't matter whether you like bird watching or not, but the whole power of observation and the learning that you can derive out of it, that was pretty amazing. Birds can have mole, uh, they can have moustache. These were discoveries. She did not pick it up from books. She did not pick it up from any other course. It was purely on the basis of observation and imagination. It was a journey of exploration that took her from just putting water initially to the kind of stuff she was talking about. That was pretty fascinating and amazing discovery for me. Uh, we generally do not learn it that way. Trying something, imagining having my own stories, validating it and then trying to build a perspective around it. That was an amazing alternative form of learning for me, at least. If anyone wants to share their point of views, any questions uh, would be amazing. Uh, final questions or about the, about no. Five final questions, whatever questions. Okay. <laughs> whatever question that comes to your mind. Um, I have much the same experience as Parul. We have all, all these birds hanging around and uh, squirrels also. And they actually eat from my, my hand all. Really lovely. Okay. They are green. Green squirrel? Is that what you're no, asking no. for? The no, birds. No. Uh, so our time sharing is the green bird, but uh, Paul is actually talking about the squirrel and um, they they actually eat from hand. That's very true. If, uh, in, it's when they are very, uh, they get very close to you, they start eating from your hand also. Okay. Here in Portugal, uh, there's a park over my, my house and there's like 20 or 30 flying around there. And I don't know where they come from. They look like it's from Brazil or something. Yeah, they might be migratory ones. They, they are very interesting. Like they, you see them only once or twice a year and, and they're just gone again. Poof. <laughs> so yeah. I'll, I'll share the videos which I promised. So this one is the one which I saw just yesterday. Aparo, Aparo, just a second. Yeah. Uh, in the interest of time, because for some people it's pretty mm -hmm. late, right? Okay, so let's check, let's check the time. Uh, would it be okay if you share it uh, in a link so that I can share? And if people are okay, she can show the videos now. Uh, yeah, that, let us know in the chat. Less video. than one minute. It will be like okay. over in two seconds. So this, uh, you can see this one? Yeah. Yeah, so they, they, they hop around my uh, roof the entire day like this and the plate is just empty in almost two, three hours that you that's what I was mentioning. So you can see three, four species here. So I have a lot of videos like this. I'm not sharing, sharing any of them in interest of time. So then this one, it just takes one step, makes noise, then takes one step. Because it's cautious that somebody might just turn up. So it will just take one step and it just goes again. And then it finally goes and leaves. So it's interesting, the behavior. They wait for the other one before they actually jump in. Uh, they just don't keep uh, rushing here and they're just like we do in lanes. Uh, one second, there's the last one. Oh, no, not this one. I think, uh, okay, so the last one I think is the parrot. I, I don't have a lot of them in this WhatsApp section. So this is the last one which I saw yesterday. And you will see him actually peeling the fruit. This one. So it's actually peeling the stuff and throwing the thing. Where is it? Is it in and India? because of this, the top one also faced me because he also wanted to get clicked. Yeah, over. Okay. It's and in India? Yeah, yeah, it's in India. Yeah, these are the minimum ones. I had a lot in the presentations, but I changed, switched my laptop. Actually, uh, that also caused me a lot of problems. But, sorry, yeah. sorry, the question, but are you a biologist? 
no, I am not. I'm just a uh, amateur photographer who is crazy for. Uh, okay, I don't okay. like. I, I, I yeah. I just I'm just crazy. <laughs> Do you have an Instagram uh, of photos? Sorry. Did you have Instagram? Do you have an Instagram you... for your yeah, photos? Yeah, I have just I just started my Instagram account. So uh, now I'll be start. I have started. I've just posted five ten photographs. So now I'll be posting more regularly. Okay, I haven't started. But can yet. I see them? Uh, uh, yeah, my account. Uh, yeah, you can see. I can share my account with you. Can you write there or something like that? You can write in the chat window, Paro. Yeah, I'll I'll just do that. So, by the way, Parul, for her bread and butter, she is a virtual reality developer. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that's my job profile, actually. I think the reality part is a lot more exciting part, Parul, than the virtual part. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, I, I am not sure how do we share that, but I'll... In, in the chat window, just you need to type. If you open the Zoom, right, you will see a chat window. Mm -hmm. One second. Actually, I think at the bottom you click. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. So um, my handle is Parul dot Ria. Um, if that, I think a handle is all that is required, or uh, something uh, else is also required. I think handle is the thing, right? I'm very new to Instagram, to be honest. I don't even know how to make reels till now. <laughs> so I'm no learning. I, I don't think I'm going to go on to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are we are we sometimes try to avoid social media, but then to spread these messages, we need social media. <laughs> we are stuck. Okay. Of course, to so, uh, spread your your job. Sorry. To, to spread your job. Yes. Yes. Exactly. To spread my job. Okay, so there. If there are no other questions, probably it is time for us to uh, wrap up. Uh, it has been wonderful, wonderful morning. Two sessions, uh, so different yet so connected at some some level. Thank you, thank you to the speaker Parol and uh, Paul for your time. I know. Uh, uh, can I make just one more question? Yeah. Uh, uh, where can I talk with uh, Paul to go to the uh, yeah, podcast? Uh, I'll just put my email over here. To anyone who wants to get in touch okay. with me. Let me just right over there. P. Can you stop sharing for just a minute? I want to show you my screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I just, I didn't realize it's still sharing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. That, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> she, if you notice, she doesn't have any of the lines on her back. At yes. least the uh, top portion of her back. She's half... <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. She's, yeah, yeah. She's, she's quite a character. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> we all are connected. Uh, I, I like the I like the frame of like we have we are not alone and then connected back to, to the whole idea of uh, of birds, so amazing! I could not have expected more from from this uh, Saturday morning. And thank you to the people who stayed up late, uh, uh, people who joined early morning as well. So thank you so much. Hope uh, hope you like the content. Hope you like the the idea. And maybe you have a wonderful day, Saturday or Friday night, whatever you have, depending upon the time zone you are in. I'm going to leave this meeting, uh, which means everyone uh, will be disconnected as well. So thank you once again, and you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.